Hello my lovely sewing friends! This is Lost and Orchids, my name is Alisa. Welcome to my vlog where I talk about sewing my own stylish wardrobe and sharing my journey with you. This is going to be part two of the Sew and Tell video. If you haven't seen part one, I'm going to pop the link up the top. Um, I've reviewed, I think it was 12 garments in part one. Um, part two today is promising to be very good as well because I have 13 items coming up that I've made in the past year and amongst them are shirts, trousers, tops, dresses and a coat. If you've seen my previous videos you know I talk a lot so it's going to be a lot of talking today for me for you it's going to be relaxing and watching and enjoying it hopefully so make yourself a lovely big drink and sit down comfy and let's get this show on the road so i'm going to start with what i'm wearing today uh, this is uh vicky so's cynthia oversized shirt i have made multiple copies of it i think this is like either number four or five. I have one more coming up after this one. So um, this one was made with a cotton poplin from Fabrics for All. I've made it, I made it last year and I did some Instagram tutorials I think I'm making this shirt. I wore it so much that you obviously when you wear it you wash it so as I washed it so much as well I've got a slight discoloration along the seams. I don't know if you can tell. You can probably see it here. Um, and also, I think you can tell it's here. Um, so basically, this is my house shirt now. Um, because at work, I don't feel like it's professional enough. Our dress code is business casual. So um, I think... It would look a little sloppy if I wore a shirt that had like that jeans effect, you know, where you have a bit of like a washed out um, areas on the garment. So anyway, Cynthia shirt, I find it to be extremely versatile. I've made, like I said, several of them. Um, the only thing is I've actually noticed recently that um, the front of the shirt somehow it's just kind of pulling so basically i think on the back you have much much more ease than you have on the front for me um i could have gone one size up but i sh i shouldn't really be doing this because it's oversized already so i don't want to mm, go one size up to make this large shirt larger yet <laughs> you know so um i think I'm gonna stop now with the Cynthia's um, because as we going further towards slightly more fitted garments, I'm gonna find my like ultimate shirt pattern that is not oversized or is not as much oversized, so it's more slightly more fitted, still quite loose, but this is going to be me with Cynthia's. But as far as this shirt, shirt pattern is concerned, it was my go-to for several years um, and I've made it in all sorts of different fabrics. It comes together easily, um, the instructions are good as always, you know there's lots of hand holding <laughs> in Vixo's instructions. So moving on to my second Cynthia shirt, I think I showed part of this one before but I haven't shown it made up like a completed garment. Now I do realize that you're gonna have googly eyes now because it's all gonna go stripey on you so I do apologize in advance but what I, I quickly wanted to show you what I've done is I've done a directional print so um, in the back yoke I have stripes going sideways so going horizontally um, and then the rest of the shirt is vertical. Also, I've added a different direction of stripes on the cuffs. And I've borrowed a pa um, pa pocket pattern. <laughs> um, I don't remember where, but it's, you can probably find it or you can probably make it yourself. A pocket pattern from a different shirt and I made 
um, again, the direction of print different, uh, horizontal here and diagonal on the flaps of the pockets. So this shirt, again, my only regret really is I've made it with fabric that shows the wrong side, right? Because this is this cotton poplin from what I believe used to be stuff and still. I do not from the top of my head remember exactly what they renamed it into because I haven't shopped there for a while, but I will write it down at the bottom of the screen. I'll look it up for you when I'm editing this. So um, again, um, you know, in the <laughs> spirit of playing with um, the direction of a print, the slits binding again was cut on a bias. So that creates a little bit, it breaks it up a little bit so you can see where the parts of the construction are because otherwise it's all like, um, again, one of my favorite shirt patterns, um, easily comes together, such a joy. And for me, it was actually my resting pattern between more complicated patterns because I literally don't have to think when I'm, when I'm making a shirt, you know, it's like a mathematical equation at the end. It all comes together perfectly and makes a perfect sense. I just like making shirts. <laughs> so, right. So these are my two Cynthia shirts. Now, my next garment is an oversized turtleneck sweater and the pattern is Grasser 702 and I'm pretty sure, now I don't remember whether I've added my own cuffs to the sleeves. Um, but um, I love the way this fits. Again, you have to gauge by your body type whether you will carry off the oversized garments well or not for me because I'm tall and because I'm, I'm not slim, like thin, um, narrow bones, you know, I'm quite mm, wide. So I can really carry off loose, and oversized garments. If you're petite and short, I urge you to go to the shops and try it on first to see what it looks like on you, whether you like it or not, and then commit to actually sewing something because you know once you once you cut it and once you sew it up and then you put it on and you don't like it, you will never get that time back. The fabric I used, I bought at London Sewing Expo. Um, there is a name, a specific name for that event that escapes me right now. But again, that's the one um, to which me and Pipskalu went um, together. And I bought this uh, fabric. It's a viscose, I think it's a viscose polyester mix. It wears really, really well. Um, I often get hot when I wear something with the turtleneck. And that's why I almost never wear anything that covers my neck because I don't know, I just can't, I think the moment I start getting all excited or um, I move around a bit more, <laughs> you know, and you start getting hot, um, I just can't deal with it, I get too hot, I have to take it off, I have to go cool down somewhere and sit in the toilet for like five minutes. But this is actually very, very pleasant and I don't get hot in this fabric. So I'm very seriously considering getting myself a couple of more colours of this and perhaps making a dress because the stretchiness of it, the stretchiness is amazing. Um, the only thing that I can actually show you now because I've washed it a few times is um, it's developing little, you can tell that it's a little bit worn now. But um, I'm sure I can probably get some sort of a plastic brush or something and kind of brush it and fluff it up again. So, um, lovely garment. I wore it a lot this winter um, and I'm pretty sure I'm going to wear it for years to come. And it's very warm as well. It's warm but it's not hot, if that makes sense. Now, what I have is another repeating pattern. 
and it's Vicky Sew's Daphne trousers. I made two pairs. I start with the one I made first. So this one is, I'm pretty sure that this one is made with a checkered viscose mix crepe from, I want to say myfabrics.co.uk. I'm pretty sure it was from myfabrics.co.uk. Um, I wonder if they still have it actually, um, but they do have quite a high turnaround. So I wore it so, so much. However, I can tell you now, I watched a video of myself modeling it for you to put on the side of a screen and I do not like it the way this particular pair of trousers looks on me. I think it makes me look twice as big. Um, and I think the pleats on the front do not help at all. And I think because it's lighter as well, like anything darker will be probably making you slightly slimmer if that's what the effect that you're after. But to be fair, at the moment, I just wear them to work all the time, like all the time, to the point where you can see how much I've worn them. Um, this is wear and tear, and they're quite long as well, so they kind of <laughs> drag on the, on the floor and, and um, on the ground a little bit as I walk. So, um, yeah, it's not, it, they do not look brand new, but um, I'm pretty happy with the... Um, my sewing, I think I've done a pretty good job. I used um, my fancy lining for the pockets and it was a nice tidy job in terms of zipper and uh, all in all it's a well made pair of trousers and it's one of those wardrobe staples that go with everything really because if you think about it it goes with black white gray green purple like everything literally everything um and they're very comfortable because anything that has viscose in them that is a slightly thicker fabric and it's it's been mixed with polyester it doesn't crease as much um, but it retains uh, the qualities of viscose which is extremely pleasant to your skin and uh, breathable, um, you know, fluidy, um, easy to work with, um, keeps the color well if, if there's any dye on the fabric. So I would highly recommend anything with viscose, like viscose crepe, especially pattern like this. You can't, even if it creases, you can't really see it. And any, don't tell anybody I said it, but um, any mistakes in your sewing, show much less on the pattern fabric. Let's just leave it at that, okay? <laughs> um, so anyway, so that's Daphne number one. And then Daphne number two was made with wonderful thin black, like a suit in wool from Fabworks. And I love shopping at Fabworks. I've never been there in person because they are quite far from me. But what I do is I go online and I choose the samples. And I think... I don't remember whether you have to pay for samples or not. But it's very well worth it. Because I've made a couple of things that look extremely expensive. And one of them is in the making. is a trench coat. Um... But so I've maybe paid like a pound for a sample, which is quite big. But then I save a lot of money on guessing and potentially a lot of money on buying wrong fabric. So Fabwork is one of my, and they're super extremely helpful. Um, their customer service is excellent. So, um, so this Daphne, again, this is my um, iridescent lining. This is the only lining I'm using at the moment. I don't know how well the black will show. I think it's showing okay. But um, mm, this is the inside, the inside job. And this is the pockets. I love the pattern. It's really easy to make. And the explanations for the fly, uh, front fly zipper um, are really excellent. 
Um, the only thing is I've realized now that it's not very flattering on my figure, so I'm going to be ditching this one, unfortunately, unless I lose about, I don't know, three stones, and maybe I'll revisit it again. But for the time being, I think black is okay, um, because it hides things rather than accentuates them. Um, but, um, yeah, this is a thinner fabric, and I wanted it for, I'll show you at the bottom, so it's quite... It's quite thin. Um, I think it's pretty... Well, I can see the camera <laughs> through. I don't know if you can see me, probably not. But um, I wanted something really light, lightweight for the summer. And as this is wool for the summer, it keeps you cool in hot weather and warm in a cold weather. So this is perfect for the summer and it's black black pairs of pair of trousers, come on, goes goes with everything, goes without saying. And I think if I make a couple of nice light or even like a chiffony blouses, it's gonna go down with this pair of trousers a treat. I think in regards to the checkered one, they I might retire them actually because they're starting to look a little bit tired after about two years of wearing them. And the next garment is Lally Top. Is it? So this is Vicky Sew's Lally Top, and I've made it with the fabric from Exeter Fabric Centre. And this fabric is very stretchy and it has a lovely shiny um, thread in it. So it's Lurex, they call it, like a metallic thread. And um, it's not like a jersey, it's not a woven fabric, it's literally a knit fabric. So you can actually see the knitted cloth. Um, and I tell you what, it was very difficult to bind, to um, apply the neck binding. So parts of it would have extra, loads of extra fabric to bind the neckline over with and some of it would have tiny bits so I had to recut it twice as thick and it still turned out to be a little bumpy um, at the back but it is fine because I kind of made it work um, I just had to have a two goes at it that's all and then also I've added my own cuffs to it because I didn't find the sleeves to be long enough for my liking and I in fact I made them extra super long like this long um, and that's how I like them. And because they're tight enough and stretchy enough, I can pull them up and they'll stay there if I wanted to, if I'm like washing the dishes or whatever. Um, but then if I want them to be quite stylish and long, then I can kind of pull them over my hands. Um, what can I say about this? I am not sure, again, that this is very flattering for me um, because of the lengths of this. So I made it... I didn't do any alterations apart from um, the sleeves and I made it in the length that it, the pattern comes in. So I think for the future I would A, make it in a non-see-through fabric because this was supposed to be dressy fabric and I wore this top for my birthday um, and it was really lovely because yeah, I did feel very dressed up, you know, wearing it. But I think my next one I make, I do like the neckline, but I'm going to put little shoulder pads in there, really, really thin, just for a tiny bit of definition of a shoulder because of, again, the specifics of my, of my frame. My shoulders are slightly narrower than the standards should be um, for my height. And so I'm going to make it longer so that it comes to the like um the level of the most protruding part of your bum <laughs> at the back you know that sort of length um and again in something light that i can probably like scrunch up a bit or put like diagonal across my body and kind of play with it a little bit for a little bit of, like a visual effect so um other than that i find the drafting is lovely, you know, the, the sizes again, apart from the links of this item, which is my personal preference, I found the pattern really good. Um, and in fact, I think I'm going to try and do it in like a, a woven 
stretchy fabric rather than a knit fabric because it's probably gonna look different on me as well but um i will be putting like a little video that i've made i'm not obsessed um over this pattern in this fabric but i'm probably gonna make another one or two and then let's ask me again <laughs> let's see what happens then all right so my next two makes come as a set i bought this fabric on eBay. I was looking for hound tooth fabric and I found this piece of fabric on eBay. I think it was about three, three and a half meters or something like this. Um, and it was 100% English wool, that's what it said on the salvage. So I bought it for quite a good price um, from a private eBay seller. I think it was somebody distashing or something. I was really happy with it. Um, and so I squeeze out of three and a half meters Vicky Sue's Yvette shirt with length and sleeve um, and let's just start with that one so what I did is so first of all this is the fabric the fabric is lovely um, it's black and white very very fine hound tooth um, exactly what I wanted and it's perfect so what I did I added lining now I didn't add lining I made one piece of lining on the inside of the yoke with lining fabric because I didn't have enough of the actual garment fabric for it and then with the sleeves I added some ribbing like a sporty kind of look ribbing at the end and I thought it is a nice accent because the whole outfit is very, like, it blends um, this tiny, fine, tiny little hound tooth, you know, they create kind of like a blend, like a kind of um, samey, like all the way through effect. So I thought just to break it up a little bit. And because I was too lazy to go to a different pattern and create cuffs and stuff, um, I just decided to add a little bit of interest. And so I've attached it with an overlocker. I attached it with an overlocker. And do you know what? I really like it. I like the way it looks. Um, in terms of buttons, I went for very plain grey buttons that kind of blend in again I wanted a little bit of indication of buttons but not too like individual style if you like because I thought if I wanted to wear different jewelry I wouldn't want to I wouldn't want to be limited in my choice of jewelry because of the certain buttons like golden buttons that I chose or I don't know or pink button or whatever so the buttons are very neutral um, for the reason that I can now accessorize it and not worry about whether it's gonna clash again the pattern is pretty easy um, I can't remember I didn't have any problems with it I don't think no I haven't um, it was really enjoyable to work with the fabric and I've worn this shirt more than I did the skirt which I'm about to show you next but I made the shirt and the skirt so that when worn together they actually look like a dress um, I've been wanting to do that for ages and I finally got a chance to and a fabric to do it with so um, the skirt has been borrowed from Vogue 1043 vintage um, dress pattern that I've made a very long time ago to one of my Christmas Christmas do's um, and I loved the links of it and I also loved that it was just like a four panels and um, it was that kind of I think it's like a three quarters it's like a three quarter circle skirt because I've made it already I know the length I know that it fits well I just added 
a do you know what always always keep the little snippies next to your nearby when you're filming a vlog because you never know what you're about to be snipping off there's always something pops up there's always some sort of thread going on <laughs> I don't know what I was saying right I was saying that I added a waistband from another skirt and I've just added instead of a side zip I put a back zip in the back it's a concealed zip it's not too concealed in this case but and here you go I did wear the skirt actually with different sweaters previously and I did wear a shirt with jeans and trousers to work and I did wear it as a set once I think I need to do it more uh, but I'm very happy with the way it turned out just exactly as I wanted very neutral print um, that looks like a dress which you actually can split into two parts and have more versatile outfits with it so that's that that's my um, set of hound tooth um, shirt and skirt so next one is um, a repeat it's a Vicky Sews amber cardigan I made it previously in a black stretchy sparkly jersey so the fabric is linen jersey mix from myfabrics.co.uk it's gorgeous it's ever so light ever so light and it looks like it's got like a nubby pattern on it I love it um, the thing with this cardigan is that it's very oversized and very long so I wore it over the top of things um, as a layering piece um, I've also added poppers so instead of buttons that they tell you to do in the pattern I put in the poppers because at the time I had my old sewing machine my old sewing machine faff don't remember at top, from the top of my head he did not like doing buttonholes on the best of fabrics never mind on linen jersey the is, which is really thin like forget about it honestly don't even waste your time so um, I went for the poppers and I never regretted it I think they add a little bit of a cozy um, little bit of interest to this garment let me just unbutton it and um, it has pockets and I've used an overlocker to do all the seams on the inside and also in the back I've finished the neckline with a cotton tape and I put in one of the cute little labels that I have and I think it's like it's such a cute little touch I've worn this top not as much as I want some other things that I've made um, I think mainly because it's kind of see-through and I think I would wear it more in the summer where I could wear something like a tank top and then this over the top um, because when I where it was a bra, you can clearly see that there's a bra underneath. I mean, I've done the same with the um, Lally top, <laughs> um, but it's just usually not what I do. Um, I don't know, unless I could probably wear it on a hot summer day to the beach and just pop it on top of my swimming suit or something like that. Um, so, um, Amber Cardigan, like the pattern, but I think even for my liking it's a bit too long and too oversized so it's probably either or uh, will I make it again? 
I doubt it. Unless I make it super, super long to the floor and then it'll be interesting, like a long, kind of thin, coaty top. <laughs> right, next stop. So next stop is um, Vicky So's Amina hoodie that I made with um, organic French terry from myfabrics.co.uk and it looks like this it's very big <laughs> I don't know how far I need to how far back I need to go to just show you how big it is it's very big and it's very 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 cozy um, I used for the pockets I used the um, cutoffs from a cotton I made a t-shirt from ages ago and I think it's just such a cute little details be detail because when you walk in and move in it kind of peeks through and just like a little unexpected and then for the um, hoodie strings I've added one of those pre-made ones I think it's hemline if I'm not mistaken but um, um, I just kind of made little loose knots um, at the end and uh, I press them flat every time I wash because they do go like <laughs> thin in a wash. Uh, what can I say about it? Um, not much apart from how easy it was to put it together. Again, in this one I've um, made the finish on a neckline with the cotton tape. I actually do have a tutorial on my channel, I think I've added it last year um, and I also have a tutorial on Instagram on how to do this so if you want to repeat this and have this kind of nice look um, um, and to prevent your stretchy garments from stretching in the neck area you can go and check it out and try it yourself if you haven't tried it. It's really easy, very straightforward. Um, what else am I going to say about it? So yeah, I um, use an overlocker for the inside seams and the fabric is really lovely. It's thin. This is what it looks like on the... This is what it looks like on the, on the wrong side. So it has tiny little loops and... It looks smooth and and it's a very bright lovely bright shade as well well I'm gonna put some pictures for you but um, yeah this is something that I could actually wear at home obviously I could wear it at home but I could also wear it with jeans and a trench coat on top of this for a more relaxed casual look so obviously a trench coat would be a little more kind of dressed up especially the one I'm making is like a cream cream white but um, this would add a little bit of color pop I think if I wore it with um, blue kind of turquoise jeans um, underneath so this is something that I'm gonna try um, okay moving on to our next garments and the next garment is a Vicky So's Leora dress and the fabric I use for it I bought at Exeter fabric center and I got seduced <laughs> with this um, very subtle sparkle in the fabric it's very pretty it's the fabric itself is black um, I'm not sure what color it's going to show you on a on a camera there but you have tiny little speckles of the metallic thread in the fabric and it's a, it's a pon ponty like structure to it, um, so it's like a medium weight, medium weight um, jersey fabric. What can I say? This is my second Leora dress. The first one, the first one I wore a lot, a lot, um, and uh, decided to repeat 
the success of it was the second one. And you know what I've realised? That I've realised that the design of it is not suiting me. Now, I think, as I've mentioned before, even in this video, that I need to accentuate my shoulders to extend them slightly more for like a more visual balanced effect. And this pattern has tiny little um, space between your neck and the, the sleeve. So your body's part of a shoulder is very, very narrow. So it's literally, it makes it look like you have this much of a shoulder. It's just not very good look. And uh, the sleeves are very fitted as well. So to me, I've just recorded a video to twirl around and show you and I watched it and I'm like, I'm not gonna make this one again because I don't think it provides me with enough balance at the top of my body for me to kind of look balanced. <laughs> There's only one way I can say it. Other than that, it's again my personal preference for my figure. It's a beautiful pattern and it's very versatile and I want to say that you can wear it in extremely different variety of ways. So there's a um, gathering, gathered part that is separate on top from the bottom. So you can gather it up and have it um, and have a little split in the middle to show a little bit of skin. Then you can pull out a little bit of the string. Um, the string is super long so you can, I like to keep the string loose. I just like it long and just like hanging there but um, you can tie it up in a little bow if you want, if that's what you want. Um, but you can put it over your neck and have like a string detail. Um, I like to wear it all the way down. I'm going to show you all the ways that I, I style it in a video. Um, which is, is a shame. It's a lovely pattern and the fabric is gorgeous and I made, <laughs> if I can say so myself, such a lovely job making it. But unfortunately I do not like the way it looks on me. Um, no, it looks okay. It doesn't look too bad. But I have garments that look, look better. That's what I'm trying to say. And I think in the light of other things that I've made and tried on and I really feel 100% comfortable, I do not feel 100% happy in this in this dress. Um, so there is a potential it will be given to a friend. Don't get any ideas, Amy. <laughs> um, but we'll see, we'll see. We'll see if I can change my mind or whether I'm gonna, when I'm gonna declutter my wardrobe, I'm just gonna say, sorry, I haven't worn you once. I haven't worn it out once, one single time since I made it, so. Mm. Anyway, that's that. That's my, that's my wonderful Lior dress. <laughs> uh, let's move on to the last. So we have two more garments to go, so hang in there. So this next dress I'm going to show you I made with a Grasser 1057 um, dress pattern and it looks like this and the design is amazing it's very good it's very good it's everything that I look for in a dress it's long <laughs> it's fitted it's got long sleeves it has interesting um, bodies detail in the front um, I've made it really nice as well. By the way, this label I got from Rowan and Sam last year for helping them out uh, with um, rallying up the sponsors for the frugal, fro um, frugal frocks, frugal sewing. So in this dress I've added some shoulder pads again. Now this part of a sh this, this dress, the shoulder pad, I'm very very happy with. Now, the problem with this dress is that I do like how clingy it is and I'm going to attribute it to the choice of fabric and the fabric is Ponte and it's lovely to sew with. The only problem is 
do you know what i'm going to be honest with you i'm going to put that video up you can literally see all the bumps like all like my bra <laughs> under my bra strap like within the, in, and over it um, you can see like the tummy area you know you can see I don't feel comfortable wearing it at all um, and I think whether I'm gonna lose weight maybe a size and then it will look okay on me or whether I should probably because size wise it's actually okay it's not small but I think maybe if I choose different fabric Mm, I would potentially like it better but I do like the design of a dress because I haven't seen anything similar um, anywhere yet so um, it's easy to make the only thing is you need to pay attention to this part here to make sure that it matches I had to redo it three times unpick and redo it and then in the end I decided to not be a hero and baste it together and that's when it all matched so can I just say again my friends just take my word for it just do some basting especially if you're doing a complicated things that you dread help yourself be kind to yourself and do some basting and save yourself some time and I'm just saying that from my own experience <laughs> You're welcome. So, now we are coming up to the last garment of my sew and tell. And I saved the best for last. And it is a Vicky Sew's Martina coat. So, <laughs> I'm going to put it on first. I'm going to talk to you like wearing it. Because there's no way I can lift it up and show you. So this coat is like a song. Um, the fabric I bought from the textile center ages ago, seven years ago perhaps, and it's lovely, but it's so thin um, that I had to interface the whole three and a half meters Think about it three and a half meters of a hundred and fifty centimeter wide fabric interfaced in short in small intervals with iron like this let me tell you it took me all evening because I had to make sure that it sticks really good so I did it about I don't know two or three times it was a long evening <laughs> but it got done um, and I do not regret it at all um, another thing is it's a little it's not a smooth fabric, it has a little bit scratch to it and therefore loads of things catch in it such as uh, my hair um, my friend's hair friends of my friend's hair um, potentially some cat hair that's flying in, in the air um, threads from the clothes if I'm wearing fluffy sweater it will be all over the coat um, and as a thing is good news is it comes off easily but I do have every time I take it off and put it on pay attention just to make sure that it's not covered in some in some I don't know what it is um, I'm extremely proud of this make I think I've done <laughs> a fantastic job making it and Everything in it is exquisite. All the details, all the little little things that they make you do, um, like the slit and the inside. Um, it's just it's beautiful, and I finished this last year this time last year and i've worn it quite a few times and every time i wear it i feel like i'm wearing a really expensive designer coat that's how i feel um and i think also because of the color because it's such a pretty color um that it kind of adds to that luxurious look and feel but honestly um i followed all the instructions 
and it was a joy to make this coat. Um, I remember doing a sum up, summing up of all the materials that I used for one of my Vicky Sales trench coats. Um, I can do it again. I can probably do it for this coat and just kind of to see what it costs me, including the fabric, which was ridiculous. It was like, I, I think it was like a seven pound a meter. I'm pretty sure it's a hundred percent wool very thin though but um it's gonna be a fraction of a price of what you would pay for a coat like this if you bought it in a shop so um i'm going to do a twirly thing on a video for you and whilst it's showing i'm going to thank you all very very much for watching this and supporting me and I hope you enjoyed today's video. I had a lot of content for you and hopefully you got all your questions answered and you had a nice big peek into my current wardrobe. I think from now on we're up to date. I have three more things that I've made in within the last year, but I saved them up for the summer sew and tell because they are summery things. So they will be included in the sew and tell that I'm going to make for the future makes for the summer, spring, summer for this year. So I'm going to love you and leave you now. Um, again, thank you for listening. I hope you have a wonderful week and I'll see you soon in my next video. Meanwhile, stay pretty and make something amazing. Love you all.